Hello. Now, I love to make synthesizers go... And I've had a huge number of requests from people asking me to do a tutorial on how to make synthesizers go... And so, that's what we're going to do, and then you guys will be able to make your synthesizers go... The yai is nigh. Let's get to it. So a little bit of theory, just so we understand what it is we're trying to do, which will then remove some of the guesswork and limit the amount of frustration in not being able to do it. So we're loosely emulating the human voice and then processing the result in one of three ways, which greatly exaggerates it and weirds it out in the coolest possible way. So how does a human voice work? Well, you've got vocal cords, vocal folds. They vibrate and move air. The frequency at which they vibrate depends upon your size, bigger in men, lower frequency, smaller in women, smaller still in children, higher frequency. That moving air is your waveform, which travels into your gob hole, where the frequency content is, is affected by your anatomy, your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, your lips, your cheeks, uh, your sinuses, your skull. And what you wind up with is um, a load of notches in the frequency spectrum, but also some resonant peaks, which are called formants. Um, and so if I sing la, you can see my formants. La. And if I sing la but different frequencies, you can see something interesting. La, 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 la. <laughs> Terrible. So <laughs> you can see that the um, fundamental changes, but the formants stay pretty much in place, which is because they're tied to my physical anatomy uh, and your formants will be unique to you. So how do we move the formants around where well, we change the shape of our mouth? Uh, A, E, I, O, U, Y, I, bananas, wow, wow. And what we wind up with are the basic building blocks of speech. So how do we take that theory over to a synthesizer? Well, for the vocal cords, we'd need an oscillator, fine. Uh, for the, the mouth, we'd need really a bank of multi-mode filters that are all resonant with individual modulation. But in reality, we're much more likely to have a low pass filter or perhaps a high pass and a low pass or a band pass filter or something like that. But you can still do something like speech with that which is what we're going to do. You then need an amplifier and two envelope generators. Let's get to it. Right, we're going to go oscillator, filter, amp, but not that filter. We're going to go oscillator, that filter, that amp. Oscillator, filter, amp, the most common configuration in the history of synthesizers. So oscillator, we want a sawtooth wave. Why? Because that's the waveform that has the most harmonic content, the most overtones. And we want to do some complex filtering. So we want frequency content to work with. So the sawtooth wave is ideal for that. So we come out of our oscillator, go into this bandpass filter here. Uh, there are three, uh, I'm just using one. I did try using three because that's actually uh, more true to how a human voice works, but actually on a synth, it sounded a bit muddy and unclear. So it works better with just one. And a bandpass filter is closer to the human voice than a low pass, but you can still do it with a low pass filter, which I'll show you later. Out of the bandpass filter into the amp, this envelope generator contours the filter, this one contours the amp. Dead simple, oscillator, filter, amp, two envelopes. So let's start the system running. I'm using an LFO just to gate it so it goes round and round. So there's our sawtooth wave. So we dial up some resonance, but not so much that it self oscillates. And then maybe close the filter down a bit so that we can then pull the fil filter up and down with the modulation. So there's a little bit of modulation. We don't want, you know, too much. So we're effectively moving the filter up and down a little bit. Now let's play with the filter envelope. We want to have a slight delay on the attack time, a slightly slow attack time. Let's play around with this. With a low, low decay time, but a little bit of decay time to a low sustain level. So we're getting a kind of up, down to sustain and then a bit of a release and start playing around with the modulation. And we're starting to get a vocal-like sound. I will need to play around with these settings a bit more, but for now, you get the point. Now there's something massive that we need to do. So I've now added another module, a sample and hold. So we go oscillator to bandpass filter, into the sample and hold, out of the sample and hold, 
into the amp and then out to the mixer. Envelope generators are still the same. Uh, so a sample and hold is a circuit that samples voltages at a rate defined by a clock, which can then be passed on and used to modulate things. But you can also use it as an audio rate down sampler. So what you do is you pass an audio signal into it and then give it an extremely fast clock, an audio rate clock. Uh, and it's sampling the audio signal so fast that it's like how digital audio works, basically. And then if you slow down the clock, you start getting down sampling, basically. So the best way to get a clock on the System 100M is to put a filter into self-oscillation. And then you get a really fast frequency. And then you can use the sweep, the, the cutoff to change the frequency of it and change the speed of the clock. So let's start gating the system again with the LFO. Okay, and now let's slow down the sample and hold clock speed. And you can hear it is exaggerating massively the effect. Listen to that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you can completely obliterate it. There you go. And then you can play around with, you know, your modulation too much. And that's basically the idea. So after a while tweaking the settings of everything on this, uh, I think I've got something pretty cool. Let's have a little listen. So weirdly human, and yet not. Um, I can change the frequency. That's pretty nice too, isn't it? Uh, if you're interested in the exact settings, uh, those are up on screen at the moment. Uh, but obviously those depend on you having this exact setup, which is quite specific. So just to make a very quick point, I've set up the same patch on the ARP 2600 as I did on the System 100M. Hasn't got a bandpass filter module like my 100M has. It's just got a low pass filter, but it does still work. So there you go. You can do it on a 2600 very easily too. Right. There is another way to do this, which I will show you now. OK, let's say you've got a synth like a mini Moog. There's no patching and there's no sample and hold anyway, so you can't do the yai sound. Well, actually, you totally can because there's another way to do it. So we've got our kind of vocal-ish sound. Now, we can't do the sample and hold thing, but what we can do is modulate the filter cutoff at audio rates. So kind of 18 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, whatever. And it has a similar effect. So you choose oscillator 3 as the modulation source in the modulation mix. Remove it from the keyboard control so it's not tracking the keyboard, it just stays at a fixed frequency. Set it high, I'm going to start with 4 feet and I've tuned it up. Uh, I'm going to use a square wave, you can experiment with whichever you want to use. I think square wave works best. Turn the filter modulation on and then dial up the mod wheel. Need to close the filter actually a bit. Let's uh, knock it up an octave. Ooh, what's even better? Oh, nice. <laughs> and then you can play around with all your settings and everything, and you get a very similar effect to the sample and hold. The only thing that's slightly annoying is you can hear the frequency of the modulator. But it totally works. Now, using exactly the same principle I just showed you with the Mini Moog, we can do it on a Profit synth. And because this is directed to the filters, plural, via the polymod on a per voice basis, you can do it polyphonically. <laughs> Polyphonic yai. I think I saw Polyphonic Yai at Reading Festival about 20 years ago. Okay, so there is actually a third way to do this. Let's say you can't do the sample and hold thing, you can't do the filter modulation thing. What can you do? Well, I've set up the same kind of sound we've been doing for the entire video on. 
uh, Toberheim U voice. So I've got the filter in bandpass mode. Let's set it running from the sequencer. And then what we're going to do is run it through a bit crusher. Now bit crushers are freely available with every DAW and there's free ones you can download. I'm going to use a hardware one because it's easier on video. So all I'm going to do is just bring down the bit depth. So there's the mix. There we go. So I can play around with the settings as well. And there we go. There is a third way to do it. And by the way, this absolutely works with plug-in synthesizers as well. Now I've made all of those presets available on my Patreon, so if you own any of those VSTs then you can download those and use that as the starting point for your own Yai sounds. Thank you to my patrons for their ongoing support, thank you to you for watching. The last thing to do is to put the Yai's into some sort of musical context. I'll catch you on the next one, cheers. Yeah.